One of my biggest fears growing up was to be forced to do mental math in pressured situations. I was really bad at negotiations that involved complicated numbers. I always got beaten in all mental math games. And eventually I failed the practice case and McKinsey PST practice badly and math was my biggest weakness. I managed to get through the recruitment process by making the qualitative part compensate. But once in McKenzie, the mental math nightmare came to haunt me again. Literally every hour working in McKenzie involves mental math. Meeting with clients, calling high profile partners, problem solving sessions, there's simply no escape. So over the years, I've developed a system for myself of doing math so fast in my head. One week of intensive practice and I became the fastest at calculating numbers on the team. I even beat my own EM. So what's the secret? My name is Kim Tran, a former McKinsey consultant and the founder of the Management Consulting Prep Platform. Now let's set up a theme here. What's the difference between consulting math and the type of math that we all learn in school? First, there's a lot of it. In a normal day, a management consultant encounters many more calculations than most professions out there. Second, most of the calculations in consulting need really fast answers. Even a really quick act of pulling out the calculator and inputting numbers is already considered too slow. Imagine you're interviewing a key client expert and getting some really intriguing figures. You need to instantly do some mini analysis in your head and incorporate that into the best next question without any delay. Fortunately, most of the time we don't need to be 100% precise. Up to a 5% margin for error is acceptable. Most case interviewers accept this, and most of the questions in the PST have answer choices far enough away from each other. This profoundly changes the way we approach most math calculations in consulting contexts. Many times, we can trade a tiny bit of accuracy for a lot more speed. With my method, you'll eventually be able to do calculations with just a 2-3% to margin for error. It's all about estimation and adjustment. In the estimation phase, we round the number into simple version we can easily work with. In the adjustment phase, we take the result and adjust up or down for the rounding we did earlier. Depending on the level of accuracy required, we can spend more or less effort on this adjustment phase. With casual calculations, ballpark adjustment can give us a 5% margin just fine. With tighter situations, a few tricks will give us a much more precise answer, with some trade-off in time, of course. In this video, I'll give you a closer insight into how to do mental math with three of the most popular types of calculations in consulting, multiplication, division, and percentages. Let's start the party with multiplication. This type of calculation is the most simple and it's the foundation to learn many mental math techniques. Suppose we have a calculation of 1,234 times 567. Step one. Put away zeros and round. 1,234 and 567 become 12.34 and 5.67. Round them up or down to the nearest whole number and we're ready for step two. Step two, do the simple multiplication, then adjust. It depends on the degree of upward or downward rounding you made in step one. In general, you would need an upward adjustment if a downward rounding has been made. And in contrast, a downward adjustment would be necessary if an upward rounding has been conducted. In the end, return the number of zeros which has been put away in step one. Now you have your answer. Let's take a typical example. 8,710 times 594. Step one, putting away zeros and rounding. We will have a nice simplified version of 8.7 times 5.9, taking out five zeros in total. Next step is to round. 8.7 now becomes 9, so it needs some downward adjustment later. 5.9 now becomes 6, so it needs a tiny bit of downward adjustment later as well. Step 2, multiplying and adjusting. 9 times 6 equals 54. It's important to adjust the rounding before putting in the zeros. 
Both of the above rounding needed downward adjustment, so I would ballpark it to be a rather big adjustment. 54 will be adjusted to 51. So the final answer is 5,100,000. A more precise version? From the 8.7 we have, examine two ends of the possible rounding. 8 times 6 is 48, and 9 times 6 is 54. So 8.7 times 6 is somewhere in between, but closer to 54, of course. Even more precisely, 8.7 is 2 thirds away from 8 to 9. So the final answer is somewhere 2 thirds away from 48 to 54 as well. 52 seems to be a good estimation and adjust a little bit down for the 5.9 instead of 6. 51.5 seems right. Putting the zeros in, we have 5,150,000. And the correct answer is actually 5,173,740. See, it isn't difficult at all, is it? All right, let's try another example. Disclaimer, I'm using Excel to randomly generate these calculations. 1,662 times 6,514. Step one, take out six zeros and round. We have a computation of 1.66 times 6.5. Because most people know 1.66 times three equals five, it's better to calculate 1.66 times six. Step two, 1.66 times six equals 10. Adjust up. Lazy ballpark method would give us 11. A more precise method would say 0.5 times 1.66 equals roughly 0.8, so the adjusted one would be 10.8. Putting in the zeros, and we have 10,800,000. The correct answer is 10,826,268. I know you're so close to mastering it. Let's do another example. This time, I want you to do it yourselves then compare yours with my method. You have five seconds to tackle this one. I'm still using Excel random function to generate these calculations. Ready, go. 76,928 times 8,691. Okay, how was it? Here's my method. Step one, take out six zeros in total, it becomes 76 times 8.7. Then round, we take 75 times eight because most people know 75 times two equals 150. 75 times eight equals 600. We will need some big adjustments later, but this rounding makes the calculation so much faster. Step two, 75 times eight equals 600. Adjust up 0.7 of 75 is roughly 50. Adjust up another time for the 76. The total adjustment should be 60. We have 660 with zeros, we have 660 million. The correct answer is 668,581,248. That's how you do multiplication. What about the other types of calculations? Now let's go for the reverse version of multiplication, division. Believe me, it's not hard at all. Suppose we need to calculate ABCD divided by EFG. The general method is to find how much EFG needs to be multiplied to equal ABCD. Then we follow a quite similar process of estimation and adjustment. The subtle difference between multiplication and division lies in returning zeros in the last step. The number of zeros returned equals the number of zeros put away in the numerator minus the number of zeros taken out in the denominator. Okay, let's look at an example. 8,509 divided by 45. Step one, estimate. We'll have a nice version of 85 divided by 45, taking out two zeros in the numerator only. There's no need to round as 85 and 45 have already been whole numbers. We then turn division into multiplication and find x. 45 times x equals 85. 45 times two equals 90. Thus, x is approximately two. Step two, adjust. As 90 is slightly higher than 85, we need to adjust it down. Turn two into 1.9. Then return two zeros you have taken out in step one. We get the answer of 190. 
The correct answer is 189.089. Starting to feel familiar? Let's try another example yourselves. You have five seconds, go. 96,840 divided by 529. Step one, estimate. We will have a simplified version of 96.84 divided by 52.9, taking out three zeros in the numerator and one zero in the denominator, which means that we will return two zeros in the last step. Technically, we need a step of rounding here, but in this case, we can just skip it and make an overall adjustment later. Now, turn division into multiplication and find x. 52.9 times x equals roughly 96.8. We know 53 times 2 equals 106. Thus, x is a little bit lower than 2. Step 2, adjust. With the downward adjustment for 2, we have 1.8. And with zeros, it's 180. The correct answer is 183.06. That's how you do division. Do you still wonder about the other types of calculations? Last but not least, I'm going to bring you to another popular type of calculation. Percentage, it's last but certainly not least. With the computation AB percent of CDEFG, simply you just need to ignore percent, turn it into multiplication of AB times CDEFG, then take away two zeros. Sounds easy, huh? Sometimes when you're lucky, the percentage is already close to some easy figure like 33%, 50%, or 75%. You can deploy even more shortcuts to cut the time and don't need to do the multiplication then divide 100 like above. However, the approach still goes through two stages, estimation and adjustment. Let's look at an example. 70% of 15,940. As we can see, 70% is not so close to any special figure, but it's very round already, so we would apply the classic approach of calculating. Step 1. Multiply 70 times 15,940. Take out four zeros and rounding we have seven times 16. That equals to 112. Adjust it down just a tiny little bit. We have 111.9. Return four zeros and take out two zeros originally from the percentage sign and our answer is 11,190. Sometimes working with that many zeros can be complicated and you'll make mistakes. So I have this simple trick to do a sanity check with the original number. With percentage calculations, the final answer has to be sizable compared to the original number. In this case, 11,000 is sizable compared to 15,000. If my calculation shows 110,000, my safety bell should definitely be ringing. The correct answer is 11,158. Find it easy? Let's try another example yourselves. Three, two, one, and go. 32% of 651,040. With this computation, you're lucky enough to realize that 32% is very close to one third. You can still calculate using the mul multiplication method, however. It's quicker if you cling to this way. Let's try it out. Step one, estimate. One third of 651,040 is one third of 600,000 plus one third of 51,000. That's roughly 200,000 plus 17,000, which is 217,000. Step two, adjust. As 32% is less than one third, which is 33.3%, it's obvious to apply a little bit more than 1% downward adjustment, which is a little more than 6,000. I would adjust it to about 7,000. My final guess would be 210,000. The correct answer is 208,332. Okay, let's take a broad view again. The key of this whole game is to be able to do adjustment quickly and with a high accuracy rate. At first, it seems hard, but with practice, you'll be amazed at how quickly your adjustment skills improve. In real life, we do these adjustments all the time. Think about the time you drive your car up the hill and still try to maintain the same speed. How much more gas do you need to push is a complicated question of computation with several inputs of 
A, what gear your car is in. B, how fast you're traveling. C, how steep the slope is. D, the wind, the friction, etc. In real life, nobody does those calculations. We really all just do it by feel, gathered from driving the car through various hills thousands of times. Computation using my method is very similar. Just try to do it every day and your adjustment skills will be amazing in no time. Now you know my way to excel in mental math, maybe it's time for you to master it. It may be hard in the beginning, but soon you'll be astonished and excited by how you can handle such big number calculations in such a short time. Trust me, because I did. Practice makes perfect, and I know you can. Don't forget to share this video with your friends when you get better. Please tell us what you think and comment in the section down below. I'm also building a forum for you to practice and compare the results with your peers. When it's ready, the link will be in the description box. There are many other small tips to be incorporated into this big method, and it would be nice to learn together as a big community. At Management Consulting Prep, we believe everybody can excel at mental math. Are you a believer?